Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright, this is Molly, and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders, but as always, everyone, even your pets, are welcome to learn with us. Can you say hi, Molly? Hi, Oh, She wanted to come for the poetry pajama party, didn't you? She needs a brush. We had a friend over this weekend, so she is a little messy, aren't ya? So after this, I'll brush ya. Oh, and she's a little sleepy, it seems. Well, we're gonna learn about poetry, Molly. You can stay here, or you can go play, whichever you wanna do. All right? Say hi, though. Can you say hi? Oh, we almost knocked it over. Say hi. You are a good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll see how long she stays there. All right. So, and she's gone already almost. Oh, she's making herself comfy. Let me show you. <laughs> All righty, boys and girls, let's get started. So, yesterday we started reviewing poetry, and we started of course, by putting on our jammies. So it's another poetry party day. So if you don't have your jammies on, go grab your jammies, please. Throw them on, get all cuddled up. I should have made myself some coffee before I came down here. Um, and we're gonna get started. And yesterday we started reading this book at the Seafloor Cafe, Odd Ocean Critter Poems, and it is poetry that is teaching us about the different kinds of critters you might find in the ocean floor that we don't know that much about. So our goals for these sessions this week are I will be able to analyze and write different types of poetry and then we have these two vocabulary words um, that we are focusing on. So a couplet is two lines that rhyme. They have the same pattern and the same beat. So an example of that is double, double, toil and trouble, trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. And then we also have stanzas, line, lines that relate to a similar thought or topic. Um, it's a pretty much like a paragraph that each paragraph has its own um, concept or thing that it's trying to teach. And then they might be arranged in stanzas by their rhyming, um, their pattern, or their beat. So we talked a lot about that too, is that poetry does sound a lot like music and you can feel the rhythm and the beat as you read. So let's get started today. Wait, wait, wait. Molly, we forgot to do our breathing. Sorry. Can you stand up and do it with us? No? Okay. All right. Let's do our stretches. Oh, man. Oh, popped my back. I don't know if you could hear it. Oh, pop. Oh, man, making me yawn. It feels good. Okay, let's go ahead and get this party started. This time, we are going to be learning about a type of poetry called free verse, okay? There are no specific rules or patterns to free verse. Does not follow a rhyme scheme. No specific rhythm. Do not have a set number of syllables or words per line. Can be about any topic, and they could be any length. Free verse. It's kind of exactly what I wrote yesterday in my example about school. 
my second home, students, teachers, staff, like family. I just wish I could have a hug everyone, school. This is a free verse poem. Oops, wrong one. There's not any rules to it. It didn't rhyme. I didn't have any syllables. I didn't have any like special, um, uh, you know, length to it. I just really wrote until I ran out of room on the paper. So we are going to read a poem in this book at the Seafloor Cafe, Odd Ocean Critter Poems, um, from, with permission from Peachtree Publishing. And this poem is a free verse poem, okay? And it's called Krill Power. Krill Power. Okay, so I want, to, before I read you the poem, I want to read you um, a little bit about what krill are, just so you kind of know. It says, krill are shrimp-like crustaceans found in all oceans. Most species of krill are no bigger than your pinky finger, but they swim in huge groups called swarms. Krill swarms are also called schools because krills swim in patterns and formations that help them survive. Each evening, krills swarm up from the deeper water to feed on plytoplankton, the tiny one-celled plants that grow in the sunlight surface layer, the sunlit surface layer. The power of so many krills paddling together holes cold nutrient rich water up to the surface phytoplankton use the nutrients in seawater for photosynthesis so by swimming upward the krill bring fertilizer to their own crops hmm, interesting so these are the facts about the krill and what they do and how their actions um, basically give them something to eat. So this whole poem is going to explain that process, that whole um, shrimp moving around in the ocean. They're not very big. When they um, move, they move up towards the phytoplankton. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, that grows on the surface that they eat and because they swarm up, they bring up cold water that helps their food to grow. So we're gonna read this and then we're gonna talk about what this author did for free verse that really still was kind of amazing, okay? So I'm gonna read it and then I'm going to show it to you. Well, actually, I'll try and get a little bit closer. Okay, so it says, krill power. Thousands of shrimpy krill paddle the daytime deep ocean and hobnob in a beach ball big school. So prowling predators can't recognize the solid shape of their togetherness. No stragglers to notice at the edges. No single tasty crustacean to pick off for breakfast. And tens of thousands of these transparent krill swim and zoom, all googly-eyed below the sunlit sea surface in a swarm with a pattern of bodies and spaces that uses less feathery-legged energy for swimming and makes finding the perfect mate easier. Then hundreds of thousands of hungry krill kick at dusk rising into the surface layer like a flying carpet. Youngsters first, then grown-ups, up, up, up. Krill turbulence, pulling cold, deep, rich seawater, up, up, up. A million feathery krill yet legs, churning and stirring plant food upward into their phytoplankton soup. I'm going to show you how um, they wrote it so you can see it a little bit better. Notice this is one stanza up here. This is one stanza right here. They're written 
pretty similarly. And then this whole other stanza, the poet did something where it was like up, 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 up. He totally made this stanza look completely different than these first two. Do you see any rhyming? Hey. Hey. We're, don't scare the kids like that. We're working. I did not see any rhyming, really. Um, I did see a pattern of not putting a capital letter at the beginning of each stanza because he wasn't, she was not writing in complete sentences. There's no punctuation in this poem. Um, and it uses the words like this. Thousands of shrimpy krill, thousands of these, then hundreds of thousands of hungry krill, right? So she's reminding you there's a lot of these in their family or their school. Um, a hobnob in a beach ball big school. So it's reminding you that it's their school is pretty big and they look like a giant ball going through the water, okay? Excuse me, I need a drink of water. Now, because the author nicely gave us this background information on krill, I was more easily able to understand the poem. Okay, now let's read another one and see if maybe this is also free verse. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms. Let me look real quick. Oh wait, look. Yeah, here we go. With her legs, eggs, with her eggs tucked underneath her arms. In the vast Atlantic and Pacific, the common Brody squid, Brody, bro, uh, no, Broody squid dives down below. As caring moms, most squid are not terrific, but Broody, ooh, yeah, keeps close watch on her squid row. In chill and murky seas, the whole wide world, the whole world wide, she takes her giant egg sack for a ride. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms, she swims the inky ocean. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms in the depths of devotion. Hmm. It's wearying and tiresome to lug that sack all day. With no time to grab a bite and never time to play. Arms spreading out then and again a squid balloon ballet. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms. Don't mind, Molly. Unnecessary. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms, she swims the inky ocean. With her eggs tucked, tucked underneath her arms in the depths of devotion. Huh, that stanza completely repeated. It almost reminds me of a song. Most other squid will lay their eggs and go. Though hungry starfish prowl the ocean floor, they won't fret for an eaten embryo since they have laid so many thousands more. But Brody's, Brody's, Brody, no. Brody's life is dangerous and hard because she keeps eek squidlet under guard. Her egg sac is attached by hooks, which may seem rather grim. It billows then collapses as she takes it for a swim. And if Broody meets a sperm whale. Well, her chances are quite dim. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms, she swims the inky ocean. With her eggs tucked underneath the arms in the depths of devotion. At hatching time, her swimming moves will shake those eggies out. In sturdy, strong, new mini squid emerge and jet about. With no care for poor mother who has raised, reached her end, lights out. 
with no eggs tucked underneath her arms. Kind of sad. Hmm. What do you think that this is telling you about this type of squid? I think it's a broody squid. What do you think? It definitely sounds like a poem. And so it sounds like she carries around her eggs until they hatch. And whenever they do hatch, they go and she dies. So it sounds like this particular type of squid lives until she can have, um, she can hatch or the, her squid hatches and then she passes and dies. Kind of like their circle of life ends very quickly whenever they uh, have their squid, their baby squid. Okay, so that one I think definitely was free verse, but it was built in the type of the way um, that was like a song. And it definitely felt like a song, especially because it repeated the same lines over and over again, or well, it repeated it one, two, three times, right? So with her eggs tucked underneath her arms, she swims the inky ocean. With her eggs tucked underneath her arms in the depths of devotion. It repeats that both times, three times. But both, all three times, it says the exact same thing. And the first line is the same, and then it tells you something she does. And then the next line is the same, and it tells you that she's devoted to caring for these eggs. Okay, so let's really quickly write another free verse poem. Ooh, that one is so cool. Wait, okay, now I don't want to write a free verse poem yet. I want to look at this one. Upside down and all around. This reminds, reminds me of a type of poem that we learned about last time. They're like the shape poems, and they're written in this shape um, that helps to describe them. So this says, fair violet snail, with a fragile, sh with fragile shell, afloat on bubbled mucus gel, rafts hidden downside up until a man of war scully, skulls by. This meal of tentacles, a real windfall, with lunch appeal. No snail reveals its biting jaws and poisoned spittle for skilled assault on poor blue bottle whose stinging cells will lose the battle with bubble, bubble, mucus, rubble, upside down snail, purple, trouble. Hmm. So the violet snail, and this is written to look like the shape of a snail, lives on the surface of tropical and subtropical ocean waters. To stay afloat, it makes a raft of air bubbles surrounded by mucus, these pretty quarter-sized snails hang upside down from their bubble rafts and wait to bump into their food like Portuguese men of war, also called blue bottles. Then the snails unfurl strong jaws hidden in a long snout-like proboscis and take bites of their prey, paralyzing them with a special purple dye. Wowzers, that is intense. Okay, so let's, as we were, work on writing. Grab something to write on and something to write with. And we are going to write a free verse poem, okay? You can write about whatever you want. There are no rules. Um, you can write, hey, Molly was getting into something. Come here. You can write about my dog, Molly. You can write about anything you want. Free verse, okay? Okay, I know what I'm gonna write about. Are you ready? Go. Hi. She's shoving her head right next to mine here. <laughs> Silly girl. Free verse, anything you want. I'm 
kidding. Okay, I'm gonna write a poem about poetry. Poetry. No. Okay, so here's what I have so far. Poetry, no rules. Sometimes I rhyme, sometimes I don't. Very, very, very true. Okay, what else could I add to my poem about poetry? Oh yeah, like a song, good point like a song, beat, pattern, good, syllables, nice, you guys are good at this. Man. Fun, poetry is fun, uh, like creative, and makes your brain think. Your brain work. Okay, this is my free verse poem about poetry. <laughs> no rules, sometimes I rhyme, sometimes I don't. Like a song, beat, pattern, syllables, fun, creative, makes your brain work. Woohoo! Good job, friends. All right, we are going to end if I don't knock all this down. I was just getting a little comfy there. My back's really starting to hurt, guys. And we're going to end by reading a couple more poems that I really just like this book a lot. And this one is called Jelly Fishing. Small predator predatory fishes slink and hunt throughout the briny drink for deep sea prey that hop and sink their favorite wiggly treats. But up swims self stealth honospores long jelly rolls with wiggle lures. Those luminescent matadors turn hunters into eats. Oh, siphonophores. Siphonophores are colonies of marine animals related to jellyfish. Each part of a siphonophore is a specialized animal or zoid that can't live on its own. A Portuguese man of war is a... <gasps> My brother's actually seen a Portuguese man of war before. I forgot about that. Oh, it has four different kinds of zoids for floating, swimming, eating, and reproducing. Wow, I wish I had that picture. That is super cool. All right, friends. So, whew, I hope that you spend some time writing poetry today because remember, it's free verse. You can write about any kind of poetry that you want. There are no rules to writing poetry poems. What's that I hear? You want to write one more poem before we go? Okay, fine. Twist my arm. Let's do it. One more poem before we go. I have my little notebook here that we can write in it. And I, you want me to give you a topic this time? Okay, I know. I want you to write about pizza. Can you write a poem about pizza? Go. Pizza, pizza, oh, you can repeat things in poems. Pizza, pizza, pizza. I cannot wait to see what these second graders come up with. Pizza, 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 cheesy. It's also delicious, delicious. Oh, cheesy, delicious, and 
sometimes nutritious. Maybe if you have cauliflower cut crust. Nutritious, nutritious and delicious, right. Pizza, 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 cheesy and delicious and sometimes nutritious. Hmm. Squares or triangles. Thick or thin. Any way you like it. Molly. Disrupting it. All right. Should be about finished with your poem. I can't wait to hear it. Let's see. Here we go. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Cheesy, delicious, and sometimes nutritious. Squares or triangles, thick or thin, any way you like it. Woo! All right, free verse is fun, no rules. Tomorrow will be a little bit more of a challenge because we are going to jump into learning about poems that do have rules. And remember, I'm not gonna write any in advance, so I'm a little nervous to do that live in front of you, but I'm gonna do it and we're gonna have a great time. See you tomorrow, bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.